to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, once again, the ones that are here, be sure you speak right into the uh, microphone. And those who are on when you can't hear or it's garbled, let us know. Okay, roll call. Okay, so John has a comment uh, about our meeting, um, so I will. Um, somebody stole the front page of my agenda. Um, regarding um, reasonable access to the meeting, and um, we had put the wrong meeting number for Zoom at the top of the agenda. Uh, we have sent that number to the press, uh, all the council members, and I just mass emailed the correct number to my address book uh, as well, which is the number that we send, or the emails that we send agendas to um, as a courtesy on Fridays. So, John, uh, I think we've gotten it out to everybody that we could. Yeah. Um, Needless to say, this is a unique situation that we're in, and prior to 2020, I don't think the Iowa legislature courts have looked at a situation like this, but when I look at the code, it talks about reasonable access of the public to a mm -hmm. public meeting. No question that the meeting was posted and notice was given. I guess I look at it as that Zoom address is like your street address. I wonder if they can hear you. It, and that your Zoom address is like your street address. And then that becomes the question of, well, if you gave the wrong street address, are you giving the public notice? Uh, so I can't say with any certainty that that is uh, sufficient notice posted 24 hours in advance. Um, now, technical error could be argued. You know, and we've done everything possible once it became known. Uh, but that's a pretty big if. So I would say you could still have a meeting, but anything you pass, I think you need to vote on again at another meeting. I, and I question whether it would even legally pass because of that, unfortunately. Now we could turn around and post notice for a meeting and 24 hours or two days, um, but that would be the uh, cautious approach that I'd recommend. And do they, the public hearings, though, would that be the same thing? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. The public hearings were correctly posted, so those notices are there, and the council, of course, is not taking any action on those. Uh, you just have to have that hearing. So I would feel better defending those uh, because that's been posted. Now there's a conflict because the agenda came out more recently than those notices were published. Those notices were published two weeks ago. And you can always update an agenda you know, prior to the 24 hour period. So that becomes a question which notice prevails. I would argue that it's the most recent one because we've done it before. We've amended agendas um, after they've been posted, but prior to the 24 hours. So just to be clear. I have some questions. Mm -hmm. Emily? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. If, so like the wrong address, I want to you now, so we, we clearly sent out public notice with the wrong address via web. I think people called Chad, and we started our meeting 15 minutes late. I mean, I'm just watching people come in. Is there no sort of grace for that, knowing that we have sort of given ample time for anyone to be able to contact City Hall or an incorrect Zoom address? Yeah, I, uh, Emily, those are all good points. I just can't say for certain what a court would say. I would say you're still stuck with the 24 hour notice period and there's a risk that somebody that is only trying to log in to the original coordinates says that they couldn't access it. I think there's a very reasonable argument uh, that we've done everything possible to allow people to participate in sending out those new coordinates. And we have members of the public 
here today. So, and we have members of the press, which also helps. Uh, so it's not like it's intentional. It's not like there isn't transparency. Uh, but I just can't say for certain what a court's going to say in a situation like this. And uh, whether this is a, a, a properly noticed public uh, meeting. I mean, certainly the agenda was posted. The agenda says that the meeting's going to occur. You people can come to City Hall to attend the meeting. But it also says you may participate by Zoom. And here's the information to participate by Zoom. Or phone, and the phone numbers are correct. Well, but then my question about the phone was, and this this could be important, is there's a code. Yeah, and the code is incorrect. Yeah, do that's do correct. they have to type in that code? Because yeah. it seems to me sometimes you so, do have to type in that code, and the yeah. code is the same. The code is the meeting ID, so those are both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we listen to the public comment from WHKS. Table the rest of the agenda and come back tomorrow night at 6.05. That would still be legal for the public hearings and everything else with proper notice for the 24 hour? Well, you got to send out that, that agenda. Mm -hmm. So technically, so you just have to post it. You got to, yeah, post it. Uh, so we could reconvene tomorrow at 6.30. Right. You know, we have, there's an awful lot of people on here now. I think we, you know, we've gotten out notice. These guys have gotten out notice. I've sent out, I don't know how many. I just sent 300 emails. I mean, I, this is not uh, egregious in my, in my opinion. I just have no, I can't give you any certainty about whether it would be considered legal or not. I mean, I think there's a lot of mitigating factors here and there's, uh, um, plenty of transparency with members of the public being present physically and uh, looking at the people that are on Zoom right now, they're participating. So uh, um, I, maybe the, the biggest issue would be any of the public hearings actually, if somebody, because that's really the place where the public would have an opportunity to participate in a hearing, not just uh, uh, attend and be a witness to it. How many currently are on the Zoom? 16. How many? 16, uh, according. Okay. Meeting of couldn't get on Zoom. There's also an address to show up at. I mean. That's true. There is, and I think, let's see. Well, there's a number for City Hall to call prior to 5 o'clock. I don't know if there's any messages <laughs> that would be at the uh, front City Hall phone number. But, um, I mean, certainly people know how to reach City Hall. I suggest we move ahead. And if you get to a point in one of the public hearings or whatever where there's questions, we would need to come back. Yeah, and I... I'll have to look through these public hearings again. And, you know, like with the ordinance uh, franchise agreement, for example, that takes multiple readings. Mm -hmm. And we can always post notice of another public hearing on, on those things. Construction uh, items would be a one time action item if you followed through with that after the uh, public hearing. Yeah, John. So this is Johanna, and I think that's my question. Is there anything on our agenda that um, would be challenging should we need to come back at a future meeting and sort of retake that action? Um, I think those are the agenda items I would be most interested in having flagged. I'm a little less concerned about the agenda item setting a public hearing. And but then these other ones, uh, I mean, there's a number of public hearings on here for rezoning 
uh, parking easement, amending the design criteria, that uh, those would I would have the most questions about. But I mean, the more people that log on, to me, the risk goes down. But it doesn't mean that there isn't risk. I mean, I certainly think that there's a lot of transparency here. So okay. uh, if you want to go through with it, you know, I, I, I can argue to defend it. I just can't guarantee any outcome if somebody challenged it. I have a tendency to think we should proceed and go through it. Reasonable. I mean, given the uh, facts that we have. Roll call. Okay. Um, Chisel. Here. Neil. Here. Carlson. Here. Luce. Here. Bergen. Here. Hadley. Here. Johnson. Here. Public comment. WHKS 2020 City Bridge Inspection Report. Um, for your report, you can use the microphone. Okay. Just put it up just a little bit, and then Sheila does. She can. Chopper, can you share that presentation? Okay. Then for him. Thank you. And then test to where you have to have it so that they can hear you there. How's that? Can anybody hear me? I don't think it's loud enough. Can anyone hear me? There. Okay. So, Are you waiting for your? Yeah. Do you want me to wait for the slides or just? Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. We can and get those pulled up there. Uh, Chad, do the people on Zoom know we're waiting for the slides? To yeah, and they can see the screen. Okay. They'll be able to see his screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jeremy, we'll turn it okay. over. Okay, so I'm Jeremy Coda with WHKS. Um, I'm the project manager for Decora's uh, city bridge inspection program. And I'm just gonna run through quickly um, our findings on this year's uh, 2020 bridge inspection. Um, so the, for the city bridge inventory, um, any bridge or culvert with openings greater than 20 feet is counted in the national bridge inventory, NBI. Um, the city has six of those structures, um, four bridges, and then two reinforced concrete box culverts. And then part of our inspection is also the uh, post-tension concrete frame pedestrian bridge over Highway 9. Chopper, can you move to the next slide? Ed, you, can, you can go to the next slide. I just covered that one. Um, so the first bridge, uh, Oneota Drive over Drainage Channel, um, that's the one that was just recently um, finished up construction. It's a pre-stressed concrete beam bridge. Um, at the time of our inspection, the approaches were unpaved, but um, I saw they're done now. Um, and there is no deficiencies noted, as you'd expect on a new bridge. Um, 
So you can go to the next, yep, Fifth Avenue over Upper Iowa River. Um, this one's a continuous welded steel girder bridge um, constructed in 2005. Um, we noticed some very minor deficiencies that nothing um, is close to needing um, any repairs yet or anything. So, um, next slide. It's the pole line, pole line road over drainage ditch. Um, this one's a steel beam bridge constructed in 1950. Um, there's a lot of section loss um, due to rusting and the beams and bearings. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, that shows what some of that deterioration looks like. Um, the bridge is posted one lane bridge and also posted for um, load restrictions. Um, there's a, there's, the posting signs are missing on the west side of the bridge, so our recommendation in the report was to get those placed again to keep it legal. You can go to the next slide. Um, College Drive over Upper Iowa River. Uh, it's a pre-stressed concrete beam bridge um, constructed in 1987. Um, we noted some collision damage. If you want to go to the next slide, that'll show that. Um, some collision damage at the Northwest Bridge Rail, and we just recommended to consider repairs to that. Um, it's no imminent danger or anything like that, but it's probably something that you want to take care of at some point here. Um, the next slide, um, Second Street over Dry Run Creek. Um, this one's a reinforced co concrete box culvert constructed in 1960 and just some minor deficiencies that we didn't have any recommendations on. Um, the next one is the second culvert. Um, it was constructed in 1970. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, um, it shows some of the deterioration. Um, the stone wings are beginning to fail, and we recommended um, repairing or replacing them. Basically, fill underneath the approaches will continue to wash out with that there, and you're going to get cracking in the approaches and settling. If, if it's not repaired. Um, and finally, the last bridge, uh, Trout Run Trail over Iowa 9. It's a post-tension concrete frame bridge. Um, on the way here, we were talking about it. We think it's the only post-tension concrete frame bridge in, the, in Iowa. Um, this one was constructed in 2012, and just noticed some very minor deficiencies on that one, too. Just, it's eight years old now, so a few things are showing up. So I ran through that pretty quick. Um, I'll open it up to any questions. Um, there wasn't anything very major that we ran into, which is good. Was there any comment from um, Jeremy? Uh, I don't know. Jeremy's on. I don't know if he has any comments. I don't think staff have uh, any other comments unless Jeremy has something. Okay. The, the one thing I would note is that uh, these bridge inspections are required every two years. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then I'll just give you a quick update on the pole line road. We're kind of finishing up preliminary design on that. Um, obviously, we have our new contract for final design on the agenda tonight. Um, we've basically sized the bridge, and we're going to take care of the permitting now. Um, the bridge we're recommending is 70 feet long. It's a continuous concrete slab bridge, um, three spans. They're very good, low maintenance bridge. Um, and then it'd be 36 feet wide, and we'd follow the aesthetic nature of um, the Fifth Avenue bridge. So that's with that, I'll turn it over to Fuad. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Mayor, Council, City Staff, Citizens at the Cora. My name is uh, Fuad Dawood. I'm the President and CEO of the WHKS. Thanks for having us tonight. We also want to thank you for all the projects that you've involved us in over the years. Administrator Bird asked me to come present our credentials since, um, you know, some of you have been, you know, new on the Council. That way you know uh, a little bit about our company. Um, we go to the next slide, please. Uh, we are headquartered in Mason City. We've been in business for 71 years. 
We have 117 employees and we are a general civil company. We provide structural services, municipal, transportation, survey, hydraulics, and construction administration. We have a total of six offices in three states. Uh, we have offices uh, in uh, Mason City. That's where Jeremy and I are from. That's our headquarters. We have an office in Ames. We have an office in West Des Moines. Uh, we also, our uh, second biggest office is in Rochester, Minnesota, and we have two offices in Illinois. We serve Decora actually out of Mason City and Rochester. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. We have, uh, as mentioned, 117 total staff. You can see the largest number of staff are structural engineers slash bridge engineers. We also have a transportation engineers as our second biggest, and then the third is our civil engineering. Um, as a corporate, as a corporation, we have a vision. We help our vision as a company. We help our clients shape their horizon. Also as a company, we have a purpose, is to provide consulting services that benefit our clients, sustain the environment, and create value. And our company, which is our staff, which is our asset, we have core values. We literally drive those core values home. We listen, we communicate, we are to be of service, we're very practical and very innovative. WHKS had entered for the last four years client uh, service satisfaction. And for the last four years we had finished in the top 10% in the country for our clients being satisfied. Um, Chad just uh, completed the one for 2020, and the results are just as good, if not better, that will be probably announced shortly. We have a long history with Decora. We've been doing the bridge inspection, like Chad said, this was initiated in, by the feds in 1978. We've been doing the bridge inspection for you every two years. Um, we, were, we were involved in the Stone Arch Bridge in Dunning's Spring Park. We did the feasibility study on the Oneota on Bridge. We did the Trout Run Trail Bridge over Highway 9, which Jeremy talked about is the only post-tension frame uh, bridge in the state of Iowa. We had done many uh, trail bridges on the Trout Run Trail. We also have uh, designed the Fifth Avenue Bridge, and we did the Fifth Avenue rating when they try to move a house on it. Also, as a company, <laughs> We have been involved through many civil engineering projects. We review on behalf of the city um, subdivisions. We have also, also are involved in your wastewater treatment plan, whether from an operational standpoint or from a structural standpoint. So we have a long history with the Cora. So we want to thank you for all the projects. I think we have a total over 20 projects in the past with the Cora. So thank you for using our company. Um, we also have a long history, uh, like 60 some years, with the Iowa DOT. Iowa DOT has services on the bridge side, on the roadway side, as well on the survey side. And what they have what's called the on-call. So in other words, you get awarded an agreement and you'll do the work for them in all these departments. We have held the roadway uh, design contract for 24 years. We have held the Bridges one for 21 years. I'm talking doing all the work for the Iowa DOT. Actually, we were reselected again, what, Jeremy, about maybe four weeks ago for another three years for the bridge office. We also have been doing the survey as well as we do inspection for them. From a bridge standpoint for the Iowa DOT, we had designed over 160 new bridges, and they vary in type and size whether they're concrete or steel or slab bridge, kind of like what's going to go, uh, what Jeremy talked about. And for municipalities, we've designed over 32 bridges for the last 15 years. Uh, we also have been involved in many, many rehab projects for the Iowa DOT. We've done over 310 repair projects for the last 15 years. The reason why we're only going back 15 years, not 61 years, that's how the state likes to track things. Uh, we've done many, uh, basically when you repair a bridge, uh, you're lengthening the span for like 20 years. We've also have done over 30 repair projects for cities and municipalities. 
the Iowa DOT had implemented a system, an evaluation system, where they score you on projects. And we <clears throat> they scored us on over, over 100 projects, and over 91 of them we had received a grade of 90 or better. On the roadway side, we've done uh, 216 uh, projects. They vary in size. One that's close to the Cora is Highway 9 and US 52. We've done many institutional roadways. We've done a lot of safety projects. There's also one on US 52 next to the Cora. We also get involved in many ADA projects as well as traffic studies. Uh, we, we as WHKS are exclusively the uh, civil <coughs> engineers or municipal engineers for 25 municipalities and we've done work for over 100 communities, 100 cities in Iowa, Illinois and Minnesota. We have helped our clients <clears throat> get funding for over 30 million dollars for the last 15 years. Our goal, our main goal is not just to provide quality plans we also uh, try to assist our clients in uh, obtaining funding. I'm just going to run through very typical municipal projects that we have done. First Avenue in Cresco. Uh, front of, we, you can see the roundabout that we have designed in Byron, Minnesota. We've done some uh, recreation in Jackson County. Uh, in Mason City, we did a, a, this is a historical area in Mason City. We did a, re a renovation basically for about a five block corridor. Uh, we just, they just finished a reconstruction of 28 blocks in Waverly. That was about a $12 million project. Actually was built in 10 phases. We also had done dam improvements in Mason City. I'm, I'm just giving you literally highlights. And we've done another uh, a flood mitigation project in Waverly. That was about a $10 million project. We just finished the wastewater treatment plan in Hayfield, Minnesota. Some of our signature, and our WHKS is proud to say we're the only consultants in the state of Iowa that has been involved in Mississippi crossings. Uh, we are literally wrapping up an I-74, which is in the Quad Cities. Our portion, this is about a uh, $1.2 billion project WHKS uh, part of the design is about 550 million. We also have been involved in a tr the tri-level between Missouri and Illinois. Our portion was about 370 million, and we also did a Mississippi and Dubuque Mississippi crossing on US 20. Uh, we also have been involved in the uh, Council Bluffs project that's going on uh, over there. The, I know the state is spending a lot of money. Just this is a really a brief background that I want to give you uh, about WHKS. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you very much for coming up and sharing all the work that you've done throughout both Iowa and the other places too. Uh, council people, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes it is. Okay, well thank you. <clears throat> or you can just run out and take a look at it. <laughs> I hear it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mayor, can I have an extra minute? Yeah. Sure. Um, through, um, I guess I had the privilege to uh, work with uh, Marion Beatty who, is, who mm -hmm. had passed and Mrs. Beatty and their son Ben is here and uh, of course Marion his soul is with us, but his body's not with us. And um, at, when I knew Marion and Peggy, they were kind, they were finishing the uh, pedestrian bridge over Highway 9. And uh, they were kind enough to share a portrait of the bridge that was done by a, an artist from the Cora. And his name is, is it Comey? Um, so I talked to Mrs. Beatty today. Thank you. And um, she allowed me, I thought a better place for it is to be at City Hall. Oh. And um, so, uh, Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, and Citizens of Decorah, 
On behalf of the Board of Directors, shareholders, and employees at WHKS, we are pleased to present this picture to the city of Decorah. As you can see in the insert below, and I'll leave this here, the picture was purchased and given to WHKS by Peggy Beatty. The below letter is a message from Jordan Comey, the photographer also from Decorah, explaining the background of the picture. WHKS is honored to have been given the opportunity to be part of such a unique project. What I'll have you do is, oh. I have seen that. That's an absolutely awesome so picture. a better place for it than I got <laughs> yes. permission so, uh, to I, do it. Uh, so a better place for it is City Hall. Thank you so much, uh, and Peggy and son as well for donating that and we will be sure and put it in a prominent place where people will be able to see it. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other public, uh, any public person that wishes to speak to the city council on anything that is not on the agenda? Okay. Um, the gentlemen, are, do they have things later also? Uh, they'll stay through the last item on the consent agenda. That sounds good. Yep. Right. You know, I thought, well, if they, they wanted to get up and go look at the... <laughs> Bridge at Dunny's yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, consent, consent agenda. Chad? Okay, I'm going to catch my breath. It's a long one. Consent agenda consists of the minutes of the June 15, 2020 council meetings, uh, claims, renewal special class C beer and wine license for Coriana, including Sunday sales. Item D, renewal class C liquor license for Lorana. Item E, expanded outdoor service area for Pulpit Rock Brewery. Item F, renewal class C, liquor license for Roscoe's, including outdoor service area and Sunday sales. Renewal class C, liquor license for Impact Coffee, including Sunday sales. Special event application for Decorah Chamber of Commerce, Ridiculous Days, Saturday, July 18, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Special event application for VFW Steak Fry Fundraiser, July 26, 2020, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Resolution 3100, approving fiscal 21 2080 agreement with Winship County for shared law enforcement center space. Resolution 3102, setting August 3, 2020, at 5:45 p.m. as the date and time for a public hearing on plans, specifications, form of contract, and taking of bids for library improvement project. Resolution 3105, authorizing and approving a certain loan agreement providing for the issuance of $6,420,000 GO corporate purpose bonds series 2020A and providing for the levy of taxes to pay the same. Resolution 3106, authorizing and approving a loan agreement providing for the issuance of $3,180,000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds series 2020B, providing for the levy of taxes to pay the same and approving an escrow agreement for the investment of bond proceeds. Resolution 3107, a resolution approving petition and waiver agreements for the 2020 Court Street and Broadway Improvement Project. Resolution 3108, setting a date for a public hearing for the 2020 Court and Broadway Street Improvements. Resolution 3109, setting a date for a public hearing for the Dry Run Plaza Park Project. And item Q, consider professional services agreement with WHKS for construction of Pole Line Road Bridge. Thank you. I move the acceptance of the consent agenda. Second. Who did the second? Okay, thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Comment. Yes, but this is a different one. Any other further, any other discussion? Nope. Hearing none, roll call. Luce? Aye. 
Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Chisel? No. Bergen? Aye. Okay, motion carries 6 1. Was there a particular item in there, Randy, that you. Yeah. Like I said, the minutes from June 15. I don't know okay. if you record me, but okay. words in my mouth. Okay. All right. Um, public hearing on proposed plans and specifications, estimate of cost, proposed form of contract, and award the bidding for the construction of the Commerce Drive Decora 2020 Street Improvements Project. Chad? Okay, the petition of waivers um, have been received. Let's see, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Commerce Drive um, project. Um, uh, bids were opened on Friday, June 26. There was one qualified bid received, uh, Wix Construction, uh, in the amount of $147,238.10. Um, the engineer's opinion of cost on the project was 146,353 and 50 cents. Uh, the project generally consists of approximately 375 linear feet of eight inch concrete and sidewalks, curb and gutter work uh, per the plans on the extreme um, east end of Commerce. Uh, we did receive um, approval for special assessment, uh, petition a waiver from Quickstar. Uh, in the amount of $27,400. Uh, you have action items uh, following this hearing um, on those two items. Um, otherwise, this project uh, was set in the 2020 Street Improvement Project by Council at an earlier date and time. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions or Jeremy's on the line as well. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this project? I see none in the city council chambers. Do you see any on the Zoom hearing or seeing none? I'll close the public hearing. Resolution 3110, a resolution approving a petition and waiver agreement for the Commerce Drive Decora 2020 Street Improvement Project. Okay, and then again, just to reiterate, uh, we have received approval from Quickstar uh, Corporate oh. uh, for the petition and waiver uh, to participate um, basically through special assessment, but a modified process. That's the nature of the petition, uh, excuse me, petition and waiver. Um, the special assessment petition asks Quickstar to contribute $27,400 uh, in up to five yearly installments toward the cost of the improvements. Um, and as I mentioned, the total improvements were, were bid at 147238 Quickstar did complete approximately $20,000 worth of work, uh, curb and gutter um, work earlier as they were completing their site work. Uh, and it made sense for them to do all that at the same time. Uh, and they were happy to do that. Um, and I guess that kind of said. And the the reply that. to your request? They, yes, it was approved. Okay. So Quickstar is, has uh, accepted that petition and waiver. I'd make a motion to approve resolution 3110 as submitted. Steve was second. Ross motion, Steve second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Hadley? Aye. Carlson, or excuse me, Luce. Carlson. Johnson. Hadley. Aye. Oh, excuse me, Neil. Emily. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Motion pass. Resolution 3111, a resolution approving the plans and specifications, estimate of cost, proposed form of contract, and awarding the bid for the construction of the Commerce Drive Decora 2020 Street Improvement Project. Okay. 
No, Steve, we did 3110. This is 3111. <laughs> okay. By Steve, moved. Okay. Okay, thank you. Emily, second. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Okay, resolution on 3111. Ready for roll call? Roll call. Sorry. Loose? Aye. Neil? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Motion passed. Public hearing on proposal to grant a right of way easement with my energy for the airport. Chad, you want to give some background? Uh, just a little background on this one. Uh, this is to grant uh, right of way easement for my energy uh, down the Ocean Blacktop in that right of way a little, and then across airport property as my energy looks to connect uh, utility service to the private corporate hangar being built uh, in that extreme southeast corner of the airport. Um, it's a perpetual utility easement for electric utility. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this project? I see none in the city chambers. Is there anybody on the Zoom? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Consider resolution 3103, approve granting a perpetual utility right-of-way easement with my energy for the airport in the city of Decora. I move to approve resolution 3103. This is Bergen. Second, Carlson. Any further discussion? Roll call. Bergen. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Luce. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Uh, public hearing on a water tower lease for 911 board communication equipment. Uh, so the 911 board, um, as we all know, we've talked about uh, several times, is updating um, quite a bit of their communications equipment around the county. Uh, this uh, lease allows them to place equipment on the water tower located in the business park uh, on the east uh, side of the city. Um, some equipment was installed by a similar uh, lease arrangement with 911 board in 2013. Um, this equipment adds to that. The lease is for 10 years with one renewable term. Uh, Centec will provide engineering and installation and installation on the water tower provides greater coverage and service area than a standalone tower. Um, and the use of the equipment on the water tower would be made available to the street department as well as public safety and, and vehicles, if I understand that correctly. So. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this, um, the 911 board communications equipment? Seeing none in City Council, is there anybody on the Zoom that wishes to speak? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Consider resolution 3101, approve granting water tower lease for 911 board communications equipment. So moved. Moved by Chisel. Second, Bergen. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Neal? Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Luce? Aye. 
Motion carries. Public hearing on proposed Alliant Energy Franchise Agreement. Can I give any background on that? Uh, this current uh, version of the franchise agreement um, was uh, reviewed and discussed by the City Council during a special work session on June 4. Uh, the only change from previous versions or at least substantial discussion uh, is in paragraph uh, section 10. Um, and I did uh, provide some of that in the background notes. Section 10 provides for the imposition of a franchise fee. Uh, and the current fee in the agreement uh, is uh, imposed at 2% uh, in the first year, 3% in the second year, and 4% uh, in the third year and each year thereafter unless changed by council. Uh, the company would begin collecting the franchise fee upon approval of the and adoption of the franchise agreement um, and it's remitted to the city quarterly. Um, there's a little discussion there about dates. Um, Council may or may not uh, be interested in actual starting date. Uh, generally, the, the company would uh, collect and remit that user fee on a quarterly basis. Uh, so the only staff comment there was whether that should align with uh, part of or fiscal year segments rather than an October date. Um, I'd let Wanda comment on that if she has any additional comments. It's probably six one half dozen the other, but. The agreement is written to start on that October date if uh, the agreement were to be adopted and approved. Um, other than that, there would be no other staff comments. So. Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Do you have communication concerning this? I do. I have one letter that I received. I received a letter by, uh, from Jody Neese via email and she'd asked that I read it into the record. Mayor and City Council, here we are again discussing the franchise agreement with Alliant. Several things have become apparent. At the last public hearing there were 11 people that had voiced an opinion, 10 in favor, one against. Interestingly enough, the one person against has recently been named to the Sustainability Committee as the longest term on that committee. One of the reasons not to sign the franchise was that there wasn't a franchise fee attached to it. Now you're proposing a 2% fee this year, 3% next year, and doubling the fee by the third year to 4%. This money is paid by Alliant customers, you and me. It's a pass-through, meaning the city will get the funds. Part of those funds are earmarked to replace the loss of the 1% sales tax. The other half to the Sustainability Committee. Having Alliant collect these funds, it will use the monies to try another vote for an electrical municipality. How much of the city's money has been spent fighting Alliant? How much money has Alliant charged to the city because of the lack of a franchise agreement? Clearly, by not signing the agreement, you intend to make us all pay until you get what you want. As I have stated in the past, I don't like paying any higher utility bills than I have to, but I apparently can count on up to a 4% increase. Hopefully the small businesses can survive. Jody Neese. Um, there was also a letter from um, Collins, is that correct, but that you put in the... That's in their Dropbox. They did not ask me to read that. that I can that's if okay. like, but... That's okay. I just wanted to make note of it. Yes. Is there anybody uh, in City Council Chambers that wishes to speak to this item? Seeing none, is there anybody that is on the Zoom that wishes to speak to this item? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Ordinance 1255, Approving Alliant Energy Franchise Agreement first reading. Can you run down the, the first reading? What did the second reading be? Uh, typically, uh, yes, ordinances require three readings unless any or, or they, uh, the second or thirds are waived by the council. Uh, typically, ordinances are read in successive council meetings. Uh, and so, uh, pending successful passage of first reading tonight, 
staff would put the second reading with the mayor's consent on July 20 and the third reading and adoption on August 3rd. So I, I think uh, what I'm hearing is if you don't pass the second reading, the ordinance fails, and that's correct. Okay, so no, what I'm asking is we vote on it every time there's a reading. You so vote? Something happens with the utility board, let's say in a month or two weeks, and all of a sudden we change and we decide we don't want to pass the franchise agreement, that's possible at each of the subsequent readings. Each of the subsequent readings would require a majority of the council to pass the reading, yes. Okay. Any other questions? No, oh, I'm waiting for a motion and second. In regards to your comment in background, Chad, about dates, I wondered if there was any additional staff comment about a preference for that October 1 versus the January 1 date that we should consider. So I'll let want to talk about that. Her and I talked about that a fair amount. I, I don't know that there's much there, but Wanda. Can you use the microphone, please? Uh, Chad and I did. Chad and I did talk about this, and I think maybe we had a little misunderstanding. I would prefer you did this on a fiscal year basis. You changed on a fiscal year because it's much easier for budgeting purposes to change on fiscal year versus January. Because if you do it in January, then you have half a fiscal year at one rate and half a fiscal and half at another rate. So for budgeting purposes, it would be easier to just change in July. In July 2020 or July 2021? You know, I, I think you can implement it at any time. That October 1st date would be fine. January 1st of 2021 would be fine, too. But then go to 2% on a fiscal year basis and change that, or 3% on a fiscal year basis. 3% on July 1, 2021, and then 4% July 1, 2022. So if we started the 2% on 2020, you're saying then go to the 3% on July 2021. Yes. So it would be a little bit shorter that first year as an option. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Dad, do you think okay. differently? Yeah, right. I mean, it's kind of written. also go just 2% starting uh, January, and then also 2% again in the next July if we wanted to give our customers a, break, a little bit of a break after what we've been doing this year. Yeah, and you know, really, I mean, we talked about this before, but you could go 2% now if the ordinance is going to be adopted here in the next couple of months um, and just let it ride at 2% and you can come back and change it at any time. Any further questions? Well, I have more of a comment about Section 11. And that is in reading the replies for in the column on the line in terms of them saying how in good faith they negotiated with us. I would uh, speak in favor of saying that the franchise would be uh, available for option the second year, and then the seventh year, then the twelfth year. And I would speak for that being adopted as opposed to not giving them the opportunity to, as we spoke at a previous meeting, show good faith and to actually work diligently with us rather than just those words being uttered. Any other? The only reason I heard that they wouldn't do anything other than a five-year first window is that they wouldn't. And so I don't see how that's in case with negotiation. Okay. Thank you. 
Any other comments? Um, so, when we pass this, Chad, we're still talking about the same franchise fee where we go 2%, 3%, 4% in a yearly basis, correct? Well, that's kind of what we're discussing right now, and that was, I think, the nature of Kirk's comment based on Wanda's response. Would you go 2% now and let that go until, and you wouldn't have to decide that now, but you could. Go 2% now and let that go until July 1 of 21 and then go to 3%, right? Is that I think that's how it reads now, Chad, in section 10. I think I would prefer to go 2% starting January and then keep it at 2% through 2021 and then change, if it changes, I would prefer how we have it. I, if we're doing this, we, we in our, when we discussed the franchise agreement and the fees, we were pretty clear about why we would be doing it. Um, so I guess in my mind, we should be collecting revenue. This is Johanna, and I appreciate Wanda's comment and think it will be easier moving forward to have a July 1 switch date. Um, so I also agree with how Section 10 is worded now, um, that implementation of October 1 at 2% until July 1, 2021. You're not coming through, Claire, no. Um, I'm in support of how Section 10 is currently written uh, with an implementation of October 1, but moving to July 1 change dates uh, in the future. Which, which you're right, it does say that. Yeah. So. All right. You're gonna make a motion to pass yeah. it as written. Any further comment? I'm looking for a motion. Um, this is Johanna again, and, and Emily, I wanted to sort of follow up on what your question prompted for me, and that is that I think we had a very uh, robust and um, heartfelt council meeting that got us to uh, the version of the franchise agreement that's in front of us. Um, we all know that was accompanied other actions that we were choosing to take um, in relation to submitting comments and a complaint to the IUB. Uh, and, and as I left that last meeting, I felt that it was important to move forward in the franchise agreement discussions um, unless I was alerted to some additional information or action um, that would cause me to reconsider. And tonight I think it, I still believe it's important to continue moving forward with the franchise agreement as it is in front of us tonight. Is that in the form of a motion? It wasn't. Okay, that's okay. I'm still looking for a motion. Second. Second by Hadley. Motion made by Bergen, seconded by Hadley. It was Johnson. Johnson. Oh, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's okay. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Uh, just a comment before we vote. Okay.
this tariff has been used in a way that is coercive towards our community. But I think we also have to recognize we may not get that answer in a timely manner enough for us to conduct the project that we need to do and to move forward with some peace of mind. So I guess I just wanted to say that is important. Thank you. Any other further discussion or comment? Hearing none, roll call. Johnson. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Neal. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Luce. No. Oops, sorry. First reading carries six to one. First reading carried six to one. Okay. Consider Ordinance 1250, approving the rezoning request for rezone downing commercial subdivision 172nd Avenue parcels from A1 Agricultural District to C1 Highway Commercial District and Scenic View Estate subdivision from A1 Agricultural District to R3 Multiple Family Residential Second Reading. I'd move for approval of the ordinance 1250. Second. Moved by Chisel, second by Bergen. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Neal? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. I'd move to waive the third reading and adopt ordinance 1250. Second. Motion made by Chisel, seconded by Bergen to waive the sec uh, third and pass. Any discussion? Roll call. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Neal. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Thank you. Consider Ordinance 1251, approving the proposal to amend Chapter 15.05, Design Criteria in the City of Decorah, second reading. Motion made by Luce. Chad, have you had any feedback on this at all? So after the last meeting, I did post this on the city's Facebook page, uh, and provided a little narrative about it. The only comment I received was a question about how the city was going to enforce this measure. Other than that, I've received no other comments. Second. And Christina provided us a positive comment about moving forward via email. Yeah. yeah. Say so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. Second. A motion by Lou, second by Hadley. Any further discussion? Roll call. Luce. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Neal. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Luce, I move to waive the third reading and adopt. Motion made by Luce, third reading and adopt. Second by Carlson. Discussion, questions? Hearing none, roll call. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Consider Ordinance 1252, approving the repeal of the Low Rent Housing Agency, Chapter 2.32, first reading. Jed, you want to give some background on that? So, just please? a little background on this one. Um, with the city's um, merger with Upper Explorer Land of our Low Rent Housing Agency uh, and the phasing out of the board, um, 
it's no longer necessary to keep um, chapter 2.32, uh, which sets out the criteria for the lower rent housing agency and the board uh, on the books um, as that agency and that board have been dissolved. So staff proposes repeal of chapter 2.32. I move to approve Ordinance 1252. Second. Motion made by Bergen, seconded by Chisel. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Sorry, I read those back. Wrong Neil. Order. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Neil. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. I'd move to waive the second and third readings and adopt. Uh, Chisel made a motion to uh, remove the second and third reading and adopt. Second, Carlson. Seconded by Carlson. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Oops. Sorry. Well, they generally don't like to waive the second reading, but when they don't. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Chisel. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Neal. Hadley. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Consider Ordinance 1253 approving the repeal of Chapter 17.48. Building moratorium, first reading. Uh, this is something uh, similar to the item just uh, concluded in that uh, this moratorium was set in 2007 by Ordinance 1107. Uh, it had a one year sunset uh, or other changes uh, to the F1 or the flood zoning um, ordinances um, in reference to. A flood study that was conducted or completed at about that time, sir, again circa 2007, um, and the language stated that the prohibition of, on the construction of such structures shall terminate one year from and after the date of the adoption of the ordinance codified in this chapter or upon the addition of an F1 zoning code amendment pursuant to the floodplain study, whichever occurs first. Uh, and I note that actually both occurrences uh, did take place. Uh, the elapsed time of one year uh, occurred. And there were several amendments to the city's flood codes uh, at about that time as well. Uh, and so again, this is a code section that has uh, fulfilled its useful life. It's no longer relevant. Um, Ordinance 1107 um, adopted some of those changes, um, excuse me, 1106 adopted some of those changes, uh, and one might ask uh, what restrictions were placed in the F1 floodplain at that time. Uh, there are a list of five items uh, renumerated in current code um, that are restrictions on structures, land, or use in the F1 floodplain, such as uh, limitations to agricultural uh, nurseries or accessory buildings, forest, forestry preserves, wildlife areas, publicly or privately owned parks, nature areas or playgrounds, uh, any use erected or maintained by a public agency, uh, public and private parking lots, or public utility structures. Right now those are the only things that are allowed in the F1 uh, floodplain, again by ordinance in response to this. Um, uh, moratorium set in 2007. So it's with that that the staff recommends this uh, obsolete code section be repealed. So the fact that it says that it will be sunsetted upon meeting those conditions doesn't erase it from our ordinances, however, we need to erase it. Right, otherwise it stays on the books as a paragraph that doesn't refer to anything that's no longer, that's longer relevant. Thank you. I move ordinance 1253. Second by Hadley. Any other, oops, any other further discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call. Luce? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Neal? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. That's uh, first reading passes. I would make a motion to waive the second and third reading uh, of 1253. Move to waive second and third and pass. Motion made by Hadley, seconded by Johnson. Any further discussion? Roll call. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Resolution 3140, approving the negotiation and acquisition of temporary construction easements from property owners for the 2020 Locust Road Improvement Project. So I've listed those temporary easement agreements that we have uh, obtained uh, or um, have confirmation that we will obtain um, from the owners uh, so listed. Uh, this item was placed before us uh, by the engineers on the Locust Road project. I provide an example there of what a temporary easement looks like and generally uh, it's a, a smaller five to seven foot wide area, usually the length of the frontage of the property from which it's being acquired that allows the engineers and the contractors some additional space during construction just for constructability of the project along Locust Road. For example, uh, digging uh, a deeper ditch for a storm pipe or a storm intake usually requires benching or just a wider berth um, for the, the digging uh, than might be provided by the right of way. And so they've asked us to secure temporary easements. That's what these are and that's what these do. Uh, they are valid through construction and up to one year past acceptance of the project by council. And that allows for vegetation and grading and seeding and things like that that may happen even after the project is completed. And then they would expire and the property reverts back um, to private access. This is Luke, I would move resolution 31-04. Moved by Luz. Second by Hadley. Seconded by Hadley. Any further discussion? Roll call. Luce? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Neal? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Thank you. Uh, consider board and commission appointments. Uh, we have a vacancy on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the presence would be, uh, preference would be female or most qualified candidate. I encourage people to look on the city webpage under commissions and consider such seats. We have an opening on the Civil Service Commission currently. I would also direct people to that. Uh, Human Rights Commission, I believe we will have two viable um, candidates at the next city council, I believe. Uh, we have two uh, community utility board seats, and I believe we have one application for that, and we will continue to work with that. And then they, we will have a city's representative to the Solid Waste Agency. Dave Paulus put in his resignation. Um, and I believe there is, I'll have to look at uh, there's various ways that that position has been appointed, I believe. Is that correct, Chad? The, yeah, I believe that's a council appointment. Okay. Uh, and so I encourage people to consider uh, working with the city, putting forth some effort and checking to see if any of these fit for you. Uh, city manager, department head, and council reports. 
Uh, just just a couple of things, uh, Mayor. Um, number one, just uh, you know, reminding everybody that uh, COVID precautions are still in play. Um, you know, we've seen some spikes uh, in COVID cases in the area, so I would just caution folks to not get too relaxed. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, so uh, precautions are still in place. And we did talk about that at the department head meeting this morning as well, that we still need to uh, continue to fight the fight. So um, uh, a note to uh, the mayor and the council that uh, the library staff has done a great job putting our city uh, council meetings on the website. Uh, in a lot of cases, most recently, it's recording, audio recording only uh, and not the video, uh, as we're not taking those video recordings, um, just given the nature of how we are trying to interact here with both in person and Zoom meetings. Um, that's all I have. There are some department head reports in your Dropbox. Um, there are a couple of folks here that may have some comments they wish, wish to share. Uh, and then finally, just profuse apology for uh, what transpired uh, early uh, at the meeting. Um, certainly uh, my oversight in terms of getting those numbers on the agenda, so my did, apologies. Did you mention Maybe I was like thinking of something else that um, all of the meetings are on the city website. They are. Uh, they are on the website. Some of them, there was one that was video, but the other ones were the audio, if anybody wanted to go back and, and listen as well. I appreciate, I believe uh, John Panko has been helping out, Chopper and Kristen, with that. Yes. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, City Council, Randy? Nothing this evening, Mayor. Johanna? Um, just two notes of thanks. Uh, the first would be a thank you to just everyone in the community for all of your efforts to stay personally healthy while also protecting your neighbors. I know masks aren't fun, but I think uh, we can get used to them if we're all wearing them at the same time. Um, so just a really big thank you for, for the sacrifices you're making. Um, and then the second is a thank you to Parks and Rec and to Clara Public Library uh, for the wonderful services being offered to the community. My kids are gleefully uh, <laughs> participating um, and always happy when I say there's another thing they can sign up for. So just thank you. Ross? Nothing today, Mayor. Okay. Let's see. We've got, I can see Emily in the first row. Anything on your end, Emily? Uh, let's see, I guess it looks like Kirk. Nothing there. Uh, Steve? Yes, I read a very interesting uh, psych psychologist um, article that suggests that we might be emotionally happier if we change some of our terminology and instead of social distancing, refer to it as physical distancing. And social solidarity. And I thought the fact that we're all in this together to be a solid group taking the steps to make sure physical distancing happens as well as the hand washing and sanitary methods as well as not going to big groups and being reasonable. We're, we're in this together. So if we can physical distance and be socially in solidarity. I think that's wonderful words. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Andy. Nothing at this time, Mayor. Okay. It was a long time ago when I heard the civic duty uh, that was a mentor of mine did when they were moving the library from across the street to the new building. She went down to the Haymarket and said, you need to come up and help move and they said, well, do we get paid? And they said, no, it's your civic duty. Uh, come up and help move. And it rang true to me today when I started thinking about uh, the masks. And I felt that it is people's civic duty and responsibilities are expected from all members of the society. And it follows the principle that citizens have an obligation to serve their society, but in return, 
they also get the rights of protection and I felt that putting a civil um, duty on for putting your masks on and obviously there are times when that's not possible uh, but whenever it needs to be to have that mask in and use it. Uh, any other? Mayor, uh, the department heads. I thought they'd all put it on the bar box. Well, so. apparently some of them want to talk. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you know what? I, you know, I, I got to get you a flag that sticks up. You know, oh, God. Wanda. <laughs> I'll give her hands anything else to move. <laughs> Wanda. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, so just a couple of things. Uh, as you all know, this is our fiscal year end, mm -hmm. and where everything has gone very smoothly um, through this process, there is still a lot of work we have to do to prepare for next year. So when you did claims this evening, and Randy did them for us, thank you, Randy, um, they were just our cleanup through the end of the year. We have not had the opportunity to prepare any bills yet for like the meeting tonight. We will have to pay those before the next council meeting. So as we as we move forward and and get more stuff done, um, we will be paying those. Um, uh, in January at the IMWCA board meeting, we passed a new program for public safety personnel and our volunteer firefighters. It's an employee um, assistance program called Connections. And it's through our IMWCA as our work comp provider, for those that don't know. Um, and it, uh, it'll provide for a number of services for our public safety personnel and our fire department and our volunteer firefighters um, that you know, oftentimes they may need more assistance with than your conventional employees. So I think this is going to be a wonderful program. Um, anytime those employees need a little extra help with something, there will be there will be some free services for them, and they will also help them find additional services if they need more help than what's provided under the program. So I think that's a huge um, addition to our work comp program for those personnel. And last but not least, uh, league meeting this year that's held in September and some of you have gone before will be um, online this year they're not they have made the decision not to have it in person it was going to be in Coralville but they're not going to do that so it'll all be online uh, registration has not been opened yet but when it is I'll let you know so anyone who does want to register can do that any other department heads like to report in person while we're sitting here or from Zoom? Okay, Chopper? I've been uh, updating a lot of the networking gear on the uh, city facilities. Um, so I have some equipment at the municipal building and the entire library is now on uh, new updated uh, 10 gig switching, so. Okay. Any, anybody else? Hearing none? Per diem was for the uh, online conference. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to I thank the council departments and the people who have been on Zoom for the meeting tonight. It was a longer meeting, uh, but I appreciate uh, the work that was done. With that, I'll look for a motion to pass. So moved. To adjourn. Adjourn.